we are now ready to configure the server. We simply need to log in and start configuring it. The first thing that you will see here that it will ask you to configure the DHCP server. If you want to use the DHCP server of mass, you can use that. But I'm already having DHCP server, which is PFSense. And here you can see boot image import process has started. For the provisioning, of course, we need to make sure that the boot images are downloaded. And here you can see the region name. Region name by default, it has given the mass server. So I'll be using mass or I'll be using mass muscle. Here is the DNS forward address. I'll be using 1.1.1.1, which is Cloudflare. And at the same time, I'll be using internal DNS server, which is 192.168.240.6. This is my DNS server. And then I don't need to make any changes here. I'll save and continue. Now you can see here that these are the images which will be downloaded. You can see here by default, it is downloading right now Ubuntu 20.04. So I'll be choosing these both images and I'll be downloading it for the AMD 64 and I'll be also downloading for ARM also. I'll be using Raspberry Pi. So I'll be doing update selection. So now it will continue to download the latest images of Ubuntu 22.04 and 20.04 which is already being downloaded. So here I'll continue. It will of course continue to download the images and I'll finish the setup here. Now you can see here that SSH key is required of course. We can add multiple SSH keys from the launchpad and GitHub or enter them manually. So I'll be entering the SSH key manually. To enter them manually, I'll be just clicking on upload. And how we can generate that SSH key? It is extremely simple. You can just go here to the terminal of your Ubuntu server. I'm right now on my home directory and in this home directory, I'll be creating the SSH key. I can use sudo ssh keygen and what will be the type of that key? It will be RSA. What is the bit size? So I'll be using bit 2048 is the bit size and then I can use comments here dash C and that comment can be for example, Amjad SSH key. This is my SSH key here. Enter. It will create the pair of the SSH key. You can see here, enter the file name which will be used to save the key. I'll be using Amjad. In case you want to use the passphrase, I'll be using that. Otherwise, I'll press enter here. Enter the same passphrase again. Now you can see here, it has created the SSH keys. And if I see the list of files, you can see here, one is the public key and one is the private key. I can simply cat amjad.public. So I'll get the public key here. I can simply copy this now and paste it over here. So now my public key for SSH is created and I'll be importing this SSH key now. So you can see here that one SSH key is added here and we'll do finish setup. Now you can see here that next step is network discovery. It has automatically detected devices on my network. I can even clear this but it will be automatically discovering after every three hours. You can of course choose the different time here. This is a DNS server. This is PFSense, which is mentioned here as a gateway. So I'll be going here to settings and here you can see default Ubuntu release used for the commissioning is Ubuntu 20.04. So right now images are downloading. For Windows, you can of course choose the KMS activation host also. So once the windows are installed, the activation will be taken care through the KMS activation. And then if case you are using VMware, details can be added in network. You can see here subnet and right now automatically detected subnet is 192.168.240.0 mass will be used to automatically load the operating system the pixie boot environment is here so this particular server is also working as tftp server now if i take you here to the controller this is the controller here the version 3.4 if i click on mass you will be able to see here the summary and what type of services are running right now region bind ntp proxy syslog reverse proxy and you can see here HTTP and TFTP. This is HTTP service right now, which is running and TFTP service is also running, which is in fact hosting our image for the netboot. So what we'll do here, we'll go to PFSense. In PFSense, we'll go to services and DHCP server. In DHCP server, we need to enable the netboot. Right now you can see here in machines, there is no hardware detected right now. Only one pool is there, which is of course this as a default pool, but there is no machine detected. So machine will be only detected if machine is booting from the network and image which is here in mass is being used to boot as a pixie boot. So what we'll do here, we'll go to PFSense here in our DHCP server and we'll be going here to TFTP 
And in TFTP, we'll be using this particular IP address, which is mass IP address 192.168.240.7, which is the IP address of mass. And then we'll be going down here to the network booting and we'll enable network booting. And at the same time, we'll be using 192.168.240.7. Now, of course, when the network boot is enabled, it will look for the BIOS image. Now, in documentation, it is nowhere mentioned that what will be the BIOS image. So here in google.com, I'll be looking for Pixel Linux. And in Pixel Linux, in example, you can see configuration file name for DHCP, and this is Pixel Linux 0. So I'll be copying this from here, and I'll be using this as file name here. So this is the default file name, and simply I'll be saving this now, apply the changes, and here we are. Now our DHCP server is ready, which is pfSense. And if I show you here, mass.io, slash how it works it will explain you how it works that it is web user interface and rest api pixie boot will be running ipmi dhcp tftp iscsi or ntp so pixie will be used as pre-boot execution environment now we need to start any machine here where the dhcp server will be assigning the ip address and will be booting from the network here i'll be creating one machine in this particular pve create vm it will be a simple VM. I'll just give a name Mass Discovery. OS will not be installed here. I'll be booting from the network. Disk also local LVM 32 GB. CPU is fine. RAM is fine. Network I'll be using VMBR1, which will be connecting through PFSense. And here I'll just finish it. All right. So now the machine is ready. So I'll be going to the machine. Here is Mass Discovery. Boot order type I'll be choosing as my network boot and i'll be bringing it to the top so what we'll do now we will be trying to discover this of course right now if you see there is no hardware machine right now available machines are zero but one pool is there and this is the default pool we can of course edit this pool here we can give it a name but right now i'm not going to do that for this tutorial we'll be just trying to discover the hardware on the network using the pixie boot from the mass now we'll start this machine first so right now you can see here it has started loading the image which is from 192.168.240.7 and it is taking the Ubuntu image. All right. It will send the details of its hardware to the mass and then it will automatically turn off. So commissioning script is started. Once the discovery is completed, we'll see the details over here. It sent the details of the hardware and now it has turned off. And if we see what are the details, you can see these are the details here. I'll just click this machine and will give all the information. One core CPU, this is what was the configured. You can see here, this is all hardware information. One core CPU, 2 GB RAM, 32 GB is the hard disk. And of course, network details and the machine details here. Same information is available here. One core CPU, 2 GB of RAM, 32 GB of hard disk and network address. Hardware information is available here. You can see I440FX standard. So you can see here I440FX. So this is the hardware information. Similarly, if you run any hardware on your network, I'll show you that as well. The beauty of mass is that in case you want to turn on and turn off the machine directly from here and you want to provision this machine, you want to install the operating system, you can do it using mass instead of going to the physical hardware or the virtual machine. So first of all, I'll go here to configuration and in configuration, you will go down here power configuration which, because we need to tell a mass that what is the technology that is used to turn on and turn off the machine. So I'll click this edit. You can see if you are using PDUs or if you are using any system to turn on and turn off the physical server or the virtual server. As I'm using Proxmox here, so I need to provide this information that this server uses Proxmox to turn on and turn off. So this is a Proxmox VM. And here I need to provide the Proxmox host name 192.168.240.3. And here is the Proxmox user ID. We'll be using root at PAM. And here will be the password. And here, in case you are using API token, so you'll be using that. So I'm not using that. I'm not using this also. And then is the node ID. So what is the node ID of this machine? So this is, in fact, the VM ID. VM ID is 108. So I'll just go here and enter the Proxmox VM ID here and save the changes. Right now you can see here power is unknown and now the moment it has started communicating, the power is off right now. So automatically it is able to communicate with the Proxmox and it is able to tell us 
what is the status of the power now what i'll do i'll go here to action and i'll click on commission allow ssh access to prevent the machine from turning off and i'll start commissioning this the moment i start commissioning it will automatically turn on the server it will send the information mass has automatically turned this machine on and right now you can see status is commissioning the test is completed commissioning is completed so these are the multiple actions that you can take of course the first action that we took was to commission it if i click on commission it will run the pixie boot and it will collect all the information of the hardware and then it will turn off and that's it so this is already done so when we started for the first time it did the commissioning and it took all the hardware information which we have already seen now if i take the action the another action is allocate it will allocate or assign this machine if i go here to action you can see here acquire which means that it will be ready to be deployed and it will be reserved so in here it shows me action allocate Allocate means that it will be allocated for the specific purpose and we are not going to now utilize this machine for some other purpose. It means that somebody has requested to be allocated. This might have been reserved for a specific job. Now the next action is of course deploy. You can take this action from here also action deploy. This means that it will start and then you can start installing the operating system. And right now if I go here to images you can see here that it will synchronize the images right now these are two images which are already available and this is using automatically it is syncing from the mass.io this is the source of this of course you can change the source of this you can have your custom source you can load it from your custom source and it can have any operating system of your choice but we'll be using mass.io for our tutorial how we can use custom i have provided the link in the description where you'll understand how we can use the custom images and if i go here to settings in settings you can see here deploy and default configuration of the deployment is ubuntu and default is ubuntu 20.04 you can of course choose ubuntu 22.04 or any operating system of your choice but i'll be using 20.04 and it is already saved so these are all the settings in case you want to pass some kernel parameter of your choice which will run that once the installation is completed then these are some security protocols it will run the security commands it will run the secret storage command and it will run the session timeout command and all of these the proxy it is using mass built-in proxy dns we already configured in the beginning so this configuration is here in case you want to change you can do that and here is ntp it is using ntp.ubuntu.com in case you want to change it you can change it A remote syslog can also be configured commissioning scripts so you can have your own commissioning script it will run that commissioning script depending upon your needs and requirements and then testing scripts in case you want to have your own otherwise these are all the testing scripts which are by default available in mass so this is the settings but we'll be now deploying this machine so i'll go to machine and i'll click on this and here i'll choose the action deploy and here it is asking you which os you want to deploy i'll be deploying ubuntu which release you want to deploy so default is 20.04 in case you want to deploy some other you can choose that and here what kernel you want to use you want to use minimal or you want to use the focal so i'll be using minimal i'll be simply clicking on start deployment for the machine so you can see here now the deployment has started and at the same time you can see the progress it is powering on you will see here that machine will automatically power on and now it will start deploying the operating system here in summary you can see it is deploying ubuntu 20.04 lts all right so you can see here that it has started and you can see here it is deployed so server is now ready it is configured and we can take all the actions so ip is auto assigned you want to do the static configuration so instead of going to the server so you can do it from here and then you can lock the configuration so that nobody will be able to change the configuration so you can check the power here and in case you want to take action you can do that by unlocking this in case you want to release it you can do that in case you want to power off once you are done with this machine so you'll be able to do that if i want to access this machine of course i can access this also ip address is 192.168.240.4 so in machine i can perform various actions i can of course go here to the machine and power configuration was already done here and then in case you want to change the tags 
proxmox so we'll add this tag here you can power off from here so it will directly power off the machine so right now it is turned off so if i check the status it is powered off so this was how to add the virtual machine let me turn on one physical machine which is available with me so this is the machine here i'll be booting it from the network all right so machine loaded the pixie boot and then it has rebooted i'll just refresh this and you will see here that another server is discovered here or another machine is discovered here if i click this it will load all the details of this the status is new and if you see it is hp pro desk 490g2 empty this is my workstation and this is of course an old workstation and here if you see cpus so 8 core cpu 16 gb ram storage is 240 gb ssd over two disks and here network is one interface and this is the network address and assigned link is here which is of course through wi-fi bridge it is connected and here these are all the details storage status you can see all the storage status here pci and usb and all of that and then if you go into configuration of course this is not on proxmox in earlier machine which was the a vm that was connected through proxmox so here we can choose the powers power setting depending upon what power you have so i have enabled the wake on lan you can even choose manual method also and here if i click on save so it will be manual method and the moment you start deploying it or commissioning it you will have to power it on by yourself i will recommend you to use pdu if you are using in the production environment even through webhook also you can call the wake on lan so that method can also be used for the time being i'll be using manual here and save the changes so this way you can discover all the hardware in your network and then you can start deploying this machine so you can see one vm which was deployed is here and this is another hardware which has to be deployed and the moment you click on commission you will be simply turning on the machine manually so i'll be just aborting this right now i'm not going to use this so i'll abort and abort action for the machine because this system already has some operating system loaded so this was the way you can use mass of course you can deploy it on your production environment to automate your it infrastructure whether it is on cloud or whether it is on-prem so hope you like this video see you next video take care and goodbye